Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you, Mark. Good to see you. I was watching a, a funny clip on SNL made me think of you, where they're talking about being a bridesmaid is very similar to being in a cult. And they're like, every time I have to go to another bridesmaid event, it's always in Nashville. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, I've got Taria put in the red. Harris, Taria, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. How are things in sunny San Jose? Rainy San Jose. Yeah. Yeah. How how are how are things living with the 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 AI, the aquatic investor? <laughs> How's, how's, your husband, how's your husband these days? <laughs> He's doing well. Let, let's see if I can ask him. Let's let's talk about him behind his back. <laughs> he got Landon, AI, the aquatic investor, Harris. Landon, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Not as fussy these days. Yeah. No, notice how we won't be talking about Taria. Like that, you like <laughs> you won't even get that question. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, I love it out. when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, Tate, how are things in Vegas? Uh, it's kind of colder than I'd like, but uh, you know we're embracing it because we know what's coming. Yeah, absolutely. It was freezing here today, like 60s and windy, but I like, think tomorrow's like 90s. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's crazy. Uh, last but not least, you know him, you love him, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, you know, it's all about mindset, isn't it? I can complain about a lot of things, but I think the topic is about that. It's about reality and how do we deal with reality and when reality doesn't meet our expectations. As Tate would say, how do you make lemons of lemonades. So let's just take a, a I mean, how do you make lemonade out of lemons? How do you, is that the cliche? Yeah. Turning. Let me go to chat GPT. What is a good cliche? <laughs> oh gosh. How do you turn lemons out of lemons? You can't make lemons out of lemonade. Lemonade, no. You can't make lemons out of lemonade. And put you the can... juice back in the fruit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. This is really going off the rails quickly. What do we need? A needle? Yeah. <laughs> we're like we're like minutes in and we're already losing our listenership. Are we gotta you gotta display that at boot camp. Uh, uh, exactly. You shouldn't put the lemonade back into the lemon. How do you put the lemonade back <laughs> into the lemons? How do you make the lemon taste sugary and sweet and delicious and yet not get diabetes? Back to land, Back to ladies land. and gentlemen. So, <laughs> so let's, let's, okay, <laughs> let's take a scenario. So I buy a quarter acre lot in a county where in order to build, I need three quarters of an acre. And I didn't realize this because I just started. And now I'm upset. My, I feel like I wasted my money on my mailing. I feel like I'm not going to make as much money on this property if I'm going to make any money. If, I don't even know if I should even sell this property. It's not buildable. Can't camp on it. And if I'm going to project any anger onto somebody, it can't be Taria. Scott Todd's probably not safe. So I'm probably going to get mad at Tate, Eric, or Landon. Mm. Right? So let's just get mad at Tate. Tate, I'm mad at you. This is not like a you problem. This is your fault. <laughs> No. So, okay. So you, when, when, when your expectations don't meet reality in the land business, how do you guys handle it? Let's just start with Tate. You know, I've encountered this in a variety of different settings over the years. And sometimes it's with properties. Sometimes it's with mailers. A lot of times it's with marketing. Sometimes it's with the response I get back from the market. And the reality is this. It all comes down to, I believe, 
extreme ownership and looking at the issue and saying, surely there is a solution to this, right? At the end of the day, that's what we need to do is be creative, think outside the box. And that's a, that's a characteristic that all entrepreneurs possess is this ability to say, how do I solve this problem? What can I do to reframe what this property can be used for? The truth is, yeah, it's not buildable. Does that mean it's worthless? Absolutely not. It might not be the dream property for you, but that doesn't mean that the entire world agrees with your viewpoint of said property. Sometimes property sells because it's cheap, plain and simple, end of discussion. And if you can wrap your head around that, it's really easy to go forward and just proceed as normal. You got to remember that not everything is going to be a diamond in the rough, right? Some of it is just what it is. At the end of the day, that quarter acre property that you talked about that's not buildable probably wasn't a $10,000 acquisition, right? It was probably in the hundreds of dollars, right? Maybe a thousand dollars. And you can chalk it up to a learning example, right? A learning experience, or you can figure out a way to make lemonade out of lemons and still sell that property because it will go. Yeah. So besides you screwing up my cliche, let's redefine extreme ownership. What do you mean by that? I mean, when I say extreme ownership, at the end of the day, I look at the business and the people who we are kind of managing the VA team. And if there's a mistake, at the end of the day, it's important to know where the mistake came from. But the mistake ultimately falls back on me because it's my job to train. It's my job to share information. It's my job to guide. And if something falls through the cracks, I can go get mad at somebody. But at the end of the day, that's not going to fix the problem. So we need to look at the problem, figure out where it originated and figure out how we missed it. And you know, sometimes that's a lack of due diligence, a lack of calling the county. Sometimes that's not understanding what zoning information means, right? And we learn from that and we know going forward, hey, we're not going to gloss over zoning codes. Let's actually figure out what they mean when we enter a new county or we find a new property with a zoning code we're not familiar with. I love it. I love it. I, I can imagine, Landon, when you were coaching these high-level kids in, in swimming, and they don't win their meet. The parents are projecting their frustration not on their child, they're, they're projecting it onto the coach. So and the same thing can happen in the land business, especially when you're doing your one-on-one coaching calls, your flight school calls. It's like, hey, this, this expectation didn't happen. You guys said, if I send out 30 offers a day, that my response rate should be three to five percent, three to five percent. I haven't gotten it's been crickets. Your fault, Landon. How do you respond? You know, this is really interesting because there's so much that goes into it. I, I, some of it's just a mindset. It, it's a shift in the mindset. I mean, in this business, like you have to take some ownership. You've, you've got to just be able to realize, like, this is your business. Period. So if you're starting there, buck stops with you, no matter what, whether you did something wrong in, or, or not, you, you have to kind of review it. Then you start to go back and figure out, well, what's the problem? Kind of like Tate was just saying, like you, you've got to figure out, well, what was the problem? Was it me? Was it something else that, you know, uh, somebody else did? And then you go through the process of, all right, well, what's the answer? What, what are you going to do? It's your business. You've got to figure out what you are going to do with this and how you're going to fix this problem or, or, or not even just a problem of you, you started this business of we're, we're here to make money and this is the program. And you've got to realize like people do this all the time. You're not the only one that things didn't happen the way that, you know, you expected. Yeah. They learn and look at, okay, well, there are other people that do this, that make things happen and make the business work. I've got to figure out how I can make this business work for me and my scenario. So I think goes back to, like I said, the mindset, you, you, you review kind of where the problems are, you know, where's the issue. And then you just move forward. I just, I think there's a lot of people that just get stuck and want to point fingers. So what would uh, you say? Yeah. So what would you say with the parents? Like, Hey, uh, 
What happened? Always. What what happened, Coach yeah. Landon? Why why didn't we win yeah. this one? Well, we always break that down. Like for me, it was always: Did you do A or B? Were you were you training enough? Did you come to every practice? Did you did you work on the skill that I told you? Did you you know follow through on you know get your sleep and rest? So I look at it. If you want to relate all that to the land business, did you mail and market like you were supposed to? Did you study, you know, and, and do your due diligence the way that you should have? Are you mentally like continually always working on the business and spending your time doing the business? So, you know, there's a lot of it that kind of correlates to me is, you know, are, are you putting all the pieces together? And if you're missing in one of those areas, guess what? I got to go start working on that area a little bit more. And if you're, I think if you're looking at it as you're going to be successful, then you make it happen. doesn't matter. You make it, you figure out a way to make this happen and you just move forward. I love it. I love it. I feel like Scott Todd wants to chime in. Scott, you got something you, you want to say? Uh, I mean, I, I would just say that, um, you know, the, the whole thing about getting like, uh, not just getting going, the whole thing about a business is learning, you know, like when, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I've been doing this since 2014 and I'm still, you know, learning little nuances about counties or things and data or, you know, things that, you know, you would anticipate, like it's going to go this way or it goes and it goes the completely other way. And you, you learn, right? Like that's just part of, of owning a business. It's part of, it's part of life in general. And I would just say that you know, when I've come across situations like this, where maybe something didn't play out the way that I thought on my mailings, um, and I have new insights, well, then I have to look at that and say, well, I'm going to either, you know, throw all of this away and move on, which some people choose to do, or I try to think about it in a different way. And, and the, the way I try to think about it is, okay, at what point would I be interested in this land? Okay, so the story that I've I've told various times is I had a guy that wanted to sell me some property and it was in Florida. It was a third of an acre, but it was landlocked. Like seriously, it was landlocked. And I looked at it and I'm like, I don't even want to own this property. And I said to him, I kind of took a playbook out of a car dealer's, you know, lines. When when you take your old beat up car to them, and you go to trade it in, it seems like their standard message to you is, we're not even going to resell this. We're going to send it to the auction, right? And so we can only give you this. I think they, I think that's standard issue 101 for them. So I was sitting there thinking about like, I, I got this property. I don't want it. And the guy's like, well, I only want to do the deal over here for this property that you do want if you take this one too. Cause he knew he had a, a stinker right? and I just said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll take that one over there, but it's not going to be one that I would normally buy for my inventory. So because of that, I can only buy it and then I'm going to have to turn around and, and put it on the wholesale market and, and, and wholesale this to somebody else who specializes in that property. So as a result of that, I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. And he said, Okay. So I seriously bought a third of an acre in Florida for a hundred dollars. Like I, you can't do that. Like you, you still can't do it. But I, I said, this is my price. And he said, okay, I bought the property. I put in our inventory. I told the sales team like, Hey, here's the deal. It's landlocked. It's, I don't know how you ever get to it. You know, do what you want. I don't know. Otherwise I'm going to, I don't know, put it on eBay or something, or I don't know, maybe I'll just sit on it until, until the the world changes and they build a street to it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but for a hundred dollars, how could I go wrong? Right? Well, next thing I know the sales team sold it for $1,200 cash because somebody just wanted to own a piece of land. They told him everything. This guy's bought multiple properties from me. The guy who bought that property. I mean, okay, no problem. So there's a price there's, there's a price at which I think that you could look at every single property and say, this is the price that I would pay for that. And then if they, if they accept it, 
great. And then you just turn around and like, I don't know, I'm telling you, people just want to own land. And if they could just own one property, like I've told this story before, I've got a guy, he told me, I said, why are you buying land? He said, I want to own a piece of land in every state of America. Think about that, guys. Think about that, what, he, what he's saying. He doesn't care what this property is. He just wants to say he owns 50 properties in 50 states. Okay, I could take one of these and toss it to that guy. And this guy is not rare, by the way. Scott Bossman told me um, a few years ago, he's like, oh man, I got this guy who wants to buy a property in every state of America. I'm like, what's his name? And he tells me his name. I'm like, well, that's not my guy. That's not my guy. Okay. So like, there's yeah. there's more than just one guy out there. No, I mean, one- but it's not... To your point, like that's something in, in in every aspect of our lives, not just land. Like, for example, Tate literally just took a sip of Coke. You can pay me to drink a Coke. It's sugar water. There's there's no way I would drink that. I'm not even drinking caffeine now. But Tate, Tate likes it, right? There's Scott with his Diet Coke. Scott likes it, so yeah, you can't judge. The mar- just because it's not for you and because you don't think it's great land or you don't think it's a great soft drink doesn't mean someone else doesn't. And at the right price, it is for everybody. I, I love saying this and just reiterating it. We've done thousands and thousands of transactions. We've never been stuck with a piece of raw land. They all sell the right price. But I think we're getting off topic because <clears throat> Taria... I'd love to know from you, how do you turn lemonade into delicious cherries? I I think uh, Landon kind of touched on it with the mindset. And I think people get stuck on one scenario that may not be going perfect in their business. This business is made up of so many different facets. And if we just get stuck on the one piece that is not meeting our expectation. We miss the whole point. So you're going to make mistakes in this business. The county is going to have wrong information. Like it is inevitable. But if you just get stuck in that one and and focus all your time and energy on being frustrated, for example, you use the uh, mailer. I've been mailing. No one is responding. I've been mailing. Okay, so continue to mail. But are you marketing the properties that you already have? Let's not just get up here on the part of mailing, continue to work at it, change your offer. You know what to do to get it to work. You may not like what you need to do, offer more. The market is speaking, your prices are too low. But in the process, how's your marketing going? How are your sales going? Don't get stuck on the one part of the business that's not meeting your expectation. Continue to work the rest of the business while you figure out why that aspect is not working. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. The technician, Eric Peterson, how do you turn cherries into cherry limeade? You squeeze some cherries and some limes, maybe add some sugar. I'm not sure. Um, no, I think that, you know, when when we run into situations like this, um, you know, in this example, we mailed an area probably for the first time. Um and the offers coming back, we're realizing through due diligence, they don't match up to our expectation of what this property that we wanted to buy should be, right? So in this scenario, it sounds like the land's unusable. Maybe you can still get to it, but you can't do anything. You can't build the house. You can't camp. You can't like, why would someone want this property? And you know, like everybody has been saying, there are people that just want to own land. And they, you know, they might think that maybe in the future things will change and now their unusable property becomes usable in some way. Or maybe they're going to go after the neighboring property. Maybe they're going to try and acquire that and the next one and and build up enough acreage that they can do what they want on that property. Again, we, we never know exactly someone's rationale in what motivates them to buy certain properties. Sometimes we learn that through conversations of selling, but we don't always know. But the reality is all of the land sells at the right price. Um, You know, I think 
if I were in that situation and I've certainly been in it before. And I think, um, it often happens when we're mailing an area for the first time. We, we don't have all that knowledge because we haven't been working there for a while. We haven't built that education as Scott was talking about, but when that happens, um, oftentimes our price points are out of line with, with what we should pay for that property based on the defects we learned about it. Right. So we can't be afraid to go back to those sellers and say, Hey, look, you know, I thought the property was this, but I've realized it's that instead. And because of that, I need to renegotiate the price on this property to make it make sense for me. And the number makes sense because of these things. Well, in this case, essentially the only way the property could be used is for investment. So that number needs to be a number that you're comfortable with, like having that capital tied up, sitting in inventory for a period of time, because maybe longer than a property that someone could build or camp on because it's there's just less options for it. So maybe rather than sitting around for 30 to 60 days, maybe that's going to stick stick around for 120 days till it sells. So that's an, a factor that we have to weigh into what can I pay for this property based on what I know about it. And then as again, as Scott was saying, you know, maybe you're going to buy it at a price where you know there's room to wholesale it. And that's your exit strategy. So we just have to think through it. But I mean, it's it's very rare that we get accepted offers. If if due diligence checks out, title's clean, that we're not going to close on that property in one way or another. I mean, obviously we have to agree on price, but just because maybe it can only be used for investment or it's maybe not accessible or whatever those criteria are, at the right price, we're still going to buy that property because we believe ultimately there's value there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a big part of it is the belief aspect, especially when you get started. And if you're having these doubts, your your mind could just start telling you these stories. And if we go back to the quarter acre parcel example, the mind starts telling you these stories. Oh, this I wasted this money. I can't do anything with this property. This business sucks. How I, I can't sell this property. Now I'm starting all over. I should have gone into multifamily, right? And we've all had these experiences, whether it's in business, it's just in life. And there's that great cliche, because this has been such a big cliche podcast episode, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. So there's always the two arrows. There's the arrow of life that hits you. And then there's your reaction to that arrow. And how you reframe it, how you approach it, do you take it personally? Is it just a problem to be solved? Makes all the difference. And ultimately in business, your problems are never going away. They're just not. But hopefully as you get your reps in, like Taria, you start learning, oh, okay, that was a mistake. I'm going to learn from this mistake and not make it again. You just get better and you get smarter. And inevitably, things, I hate to say it, don't ever get easier. You just get better and stronger at the business. And it just feels like that to you. But the problems never go away. So, when the inevitable lemons of the land business uh, drop from that lemon tree, take take a step back, make some cool, refreshing lemonade that's hopefully 300 to 1,000% return on your investment because that's why you're doing this. And don't lose sight that to have total freedom to work when you want, where you want, with whom you want, and build a passive income machine if it were that easy and there were no problems, we wouldn't have a business because everyone would be doing it. And Scott Todd, I mean, we talk about this all the time for years and years and years. Is there a better business? I'll tell you what, man, I don't know that there's a, I haven't seen a better business, right? I look at them and um, 
every time I, I look at it, I just come back to this one. I look at a lot of businesses. I get a lot of shiny object syndrome. My wife tells me like, stop it. And, um, I don't know. I just keep coming back to this one. So maybe there is, but you know what, Mark, I, I talked to a multi-family guy the other day and he, told, he was telling me how great his business is. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you just fall in love with, with a particular business model and that's just the thing, right? Like it's, I guess, you know, you're going to love some business. So I love this one. There you go. Well, I think this is a great podcast episode. Hopefully the listeners are getting value. And now before we go to Landon for the tip of the week, we have to talk about our sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. I know what you're thinking. The investment, the tuition. What's it going to cost me? It ain't going to cost you nothing, guaranteed. You're going to make back that money. 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Landon. AI Harris, what is your tip of the week? So I think this is this is always something interesting to me. So um, I started looking for something to improve some of my systems, and I needed to just come up with a better way to explain it. So I was I was going through, and we start I started building out some um, a, a platform. I'm always doing. Um, swim lanes um and this is something we do in this business quite often so we're doing this quarterly um but i also wanted something that would help me kind of do a mind map better um so this um this tip of the week is figma.com i'm gonna put it in the chat as well um i don't know if this is new but it's kind of like scapel on steroids so it's you know it's it's great way to kind of do your mind map it's real clean real clear um but then what i also liked was i'm putting together uh, a new format for my team and i'm able to kind of integrate some videos i can put in folder links um, i can do uh, just a lot of different things that kind of flow a little bit better um so i'm kind of putting this together uh through through using Figma and they come with different templates um, that you can kind of start with if you needed something to go with. But um, I don't know, I found it's really cool, really fun way to kind of flow through, really good way to uh, explain some things and it's free. So, uh, or at least the, the beginning session of it, it's free. You can upgrade if you need to, but I thought it was pretty cool. This is this is pretty geeky, pretty cool. I've, I've heard of Figma. Tate, have you heard of Figma? I have not. No, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious. I'm sure Eric has. Eric, have you heard of Figma? No, actually, I'm looking at it now. You're kidding, Taria. Have you heard of Figma? I have not. No kidding. Virtual Scott Todd. Have you heard of Figma? I I have heard of Figma, um, but you know what? It's just recently popped up on the radar. For me, because I've seen, um, I saw another platform that said, Hey, we integrate with Figma. And I'm like, What's well, Figma? And I went and looked at it and I was like, Okay, that's pretty cool. And then I was looking at something else just yesterday. And the guy's like, Hey, um, in this training class, we will teach you how to use Figma. And I was like, Wow, this must be the real deal. And now that AI says this is the real deal, I, I mean, I'm on it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I, anything that has a web hook, I like. Well, that's that's on the uh, $45 per Azure <laughs> per month yeah. edition. But yeah. still, that's really cool. I mean, this thing is, it's it's pretty expansive. I had no idea until I started playing with it. And I'm probably only using a tenth of it. It's it's pretty deep. Yeah. Tria, are you a little salty that we're like, oh, yeah. Another another great tip of the week from Landon. No, I'm appreciative. I need him to stay on a roll. 
<laughs> okay, good. good. <laughs> no. Well, I'm no I, hater. I want to thank the listeners and remind you the only way that Landon's going to be able to stay on this role and Tariya's going to be able to stay out of the tip of the week business is you can do three little favors. Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review. Support at blank.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. But even if you have Dirt Rich, and if you have several signed copies, do it anyways. It just helps. We'd appreciate it. All right. Are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's let freedom, 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 brain, brain. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so real quickly, Tate, what's what's the dilemma? You know, I I don't know if we want to do this because when it comes to travel, I'm already painted as this terrible guy. So I don't know if I want to bring this up because I I think it's just going to put an asterisk next to my name and people will be like, you're I not a real friend. I think it's a, it's a it's a true ethical dilemma. In, in a, a great philosophical life debate. It's, it's reclining, I think we all can agree. You should It's recline. totally a fine. That's fine. Reclining is fine. So, <laughs> it's so wrong. Guys, so let, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> all right, the real question is... Can we talk about reclining for a minute, though? Because <laughs> I, I, got on, I got on a plane the other day um, uh, oh, poor, oh, poor Scott Tom. You flew with the rest of us, huh? Oh, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Commercial. I was commercial, um, but it was in first class, by the way. Um, and it was the red eye. And um, it wasn't the lay down beds. I feel like that uh, wealthy woman that goes to Waffle House on Instagram. I don't know. It was the. It was not the lay down beds in first class. And um, but it's the red eye. And I'm flying and I'm like, I'm reclining, but I was in first class where there's more room. So I think that you got to put a qualifier or an asterisk next to that recline thing. And it was nice. Uh, that, by the way, that's the most elitist thing you've ever said, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, if you're in first class, you can recline because there's no one behind you to really bother. We're talking <laughs> about the coachy people. But no, no, but, but what I'm saying is that even if I were on the red eye, and everybody was putting their seats back. I think that that might be acceptable, but during the day, I don't think it's acceptable. Yeah. Eric, not, not even in first class if you're not going to get. Oh, it's not going to bother you. It's fine. There's there's room oh, for that, see? coach. Yeah, there's see? no room for that. There's no room. Wow. So Eric's an elitist too. All right, Eric, let's go. We're going to fly with the class next time. All right. Anyway, what going to here? Eric's like, I'm, I'm behind Scott Todd, the pilot, in his private plane, and Scott declines. That I think is legit. If the pilot wants to recline in his private plane, fair enough. No. Look, today's, today's travel debate is, is it worthwhile to be picking somebody up or dropping somebody off at the airport, right? Like we're busy. Everybody's busy. And you guys are off flying to Vegas. Does it make sense for me to go and pick up each one of you from the airport? Or should I say, should you guys be respecting me and saying, hey, I'm just going to catch an Uber? That's the real question. I think it's a great question. Sharia, great question. What's, where, where's your mind go? I like to be self-sufficient when I show up somewhere and not be a burden to other people. So I'm an Uber person. And if someone volunteers to pick me up, that's different. But I assume, hey, what's your address? I'll catch an Uber there. And I, if they want to pick me up, fine. But I'm not going to, I'm here's my flight itinerary, pick me up. I'm not that person. Okay. Landon? Degrees for me. How, 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 good of a friend are we are, are we close are we you know you, do I talk all, all right Let, let's pick up that I'm, I'm a tree tree is flying in she just visited family in Atlanta and she's oh, like Landon, close. I want it <laughs> you pick me up at the airport I was taking her pick my wife up I, I, I yeah. better pick my up I better you pick, better be now yeah. up. how about how about how about your mother-in-law yes oh. I'm picking up my, my mother-in-law but I might send her an Uber. Oh, oh I'll get it. Oh, oh, I'll get it. Oh, 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 no. I'll get it for her. 
Landon, I mean, her ex can't even fix that. She's a lovely woman. I wouldn't. <laughs> Listen, Mark, we have found our Mark. We have found our golden goose on this podcast, man. Forget time out land. From here on out, we're having married couples on here. We're asking them similar questions. <laughs> this is this is way better than newlywed game. All right, Aaron. Oh, this is way better. Can't, wait, we can't leave this yet. Your we best friend down into it and stir the pot. Okay, your best friend from, from Chicago flies in to Nashville. Does he Uber over or Lyft over, or do you pick him up? The catch is they land at like two thirty in the afternoon, in the middle of like picking up kids from school. It's the middle of the day. You're gonna be you're gonna be put out. You're in your deep work hour. I mean, first of all, if my friend asks me to pick him up, I will pick them up. Okay, I, I, think, I think that's that's a whole different philosophical deba- debate. Should you even ask to be picked up? I think the question okay. is, do you, as the friend, initiate, hey, I'm going to pick you up? I would never do that. But here's my, <laughs> here's my thing. <laughs> Mark, nobody is leaving Casa de Litchfield and they're not they're not gonna walk away and say that I'm a bad host. Oh, like it's one of the things okay. I pride myself on. You've got is, three young kids too. I, I wouldn't fault you. No, but I'm not I, look. But Scott Todd, I, want I you would to leave. Scott's I want an empty investor. Leave. I want him taking me to the airport. Okay, look. <laughs> I want I want that I want that extra thirty minutes of Scott Todd time. <laughs> All right, look, I've, I've had, had my like, donut, and I want to get a little ride. I got to stop at a Wawa. <laughs> no, Wawa's out, man. We're, we're now on the racetrack. Um, oh, <laughs> look, you got to get the right brand. Um, you got to color. And, like, listen, I don't know if they're going to start sponsoring me or not, so we got to make sure we're promote, promoting. Um, okay, okay, so, Mark, if, if you – I think it also varies with, like, almost like what – to Rio was saying to the degree of the friend, right? So, you know, like if um if somebody's come in town, like okay, so I put myself in my own situation or my own shoes. Like if I if I'm flying into town, I I agree with Tria. I don't want to be reliant on somebody else. I don't like to be reliant on somebody else. So if I fly into town, I'll be like, hey, don't pick me up because then if you are picking me up, then I feel rushed i feel like oh man i gotta get off the plane i gotta march fast i gotta get my other bags if i've checked it which i don't do but then like i gotta get there because i appreciate your time as opposed to like i probably wouldn't even stop and use the bathroom as opposed to like if i had my own uber well then i don't know i'm gonna bebop through the airport like i don't know like larry david would you know like just bebop <laughs> casually through the airport taking my time saying hello to everybody saying hello to nobody but then you know that's the thing is like I'm going to get there when I want to get there. I'm going to move at my own speed. So I wouldn't want to do it. But if you said to me, hey, would you pick me up? I agree with Eric. I'd probably go pick you up. And I probably wouldn't harbor any negative feelings that I could think of, but resentment. But maybe I would. All right. Well, I from my point of view, if, if any of you guys flew into Scottsdale, it would be my great pleasure to pick you up at the airport because it's extra time for us to spend time together. And you pick now, me up, you I, pick now, me up at the airport. Yeah, I like that, but I'm an empty yeah. nester. To Tate's point and to Eric's point, if it was in the middle of the day and I had to deal with kids and I had to make a choice between quality time or actually, not necessarily quality time, but like just the business of running my family and picking up the airport, that's a different conversation where I'd have to, I'd have to have to talk with you where, okay, you're flying at this time. You're choosing that time. I just want you to know that's the witching hour for me and my family. I'll be happy to to pay for your Uber. Come on over. Hopefully, you know, the kids have not destroyed the entire house. And then you and I can go out and have some a restful, peaceful evening and then start our our trip, right? Now that being said, to Tria's point and Elena's point, if it's a if it's an in law, right, and let's say it's like and in, in, in they're a little older, I'm not putting them in an Uber. 
right? Kids, come with me. We're all going to pick up grandma, <laughs> okay? And we'll put on your music. You're you going to wish, you're going to wish you Ubered by the time you get done with that ride in my car. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, so I think it, I think it's situational for the most, for the, I think, the, I think the, I think the answer is definitive, is definitely situational. And I think you have to take all, it, it's very nuanced, but I think generally speaking, if someone's spending the money to visit you, then it's not, it's not, I don't think it should be like, oh, I'm getting put out to pick you up and that didn't take you to the airport, generally speaking, depending on your, your situation. Again, I have three young kids at home and I've got a cranky spouse who's like <laughs> at their wits end and be taking hour out of my day now to take my good friend to the airport. It might be worth it for the relationship capital to invest in an Uber and wish my friend well. And my friend would understand. What do you think? Ken? It's it's also different when you're offering to pick somebody up as opposed to them asking you to be picked up, right? I okay, yeah, absolutely. And I would I, I would just be honest. I wouldn't have any resentment about it. But if I was in Tate's situation, I'd like, sorry, brother. Can't. <laughs> right? Like that's that's bath time for me. But take an Uber, come on over. And if we're still in bath time, like don't ring the doorbell because I'm not getting it. But after that, so my kids don't drown, I'll come get you. Like, they, like people have to understand, like, you know, it, these things kind of come first before them, right? It's weird. I just think it's an interesting topic. I mean, look, I'm I'm happy to drive and pick people up from the airport, right? I really am. But there's a few times, like. Wait, what time does your flight leave? You got the 5 a.m. flight out of Vegas? You need a ride? Yeah, there's people who do that. And it's not me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think... You're not anything, my mom. I don't think there's anything wrong with like the, the limits of, this is too early, this is the red eye, you know, Uber over in, you know, in the morning when you're, after a good night's sleep at your hotel. Because I'm I'm not waking up at two in the morning because you took a red eye. You made your bed. Now sleep in it. There you go. <laughs> Eight. I land at one ten. A.M. or yeah. P.M. That's the question. P.M. Brother. Yeah. No problem. What do you want to go for? But I'm not. I'm not staying. Um, I'm not staying in Vegas. I'm staying in uh, Kingsman. So uh, yes. So you need me to you drive you to Kingman, and then yeah, and then pick me up every morning. Yeah, three yeah. hours, no big deal. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. No worries. Right. I do think you if you've got if you if, if you've been listening this long, by the way, to this bonus information, but in the mighty average group of the Facebook group, if you recline or don't recline, we'd love to get that uh, back up <laughs> or pick up or you know or Uber or pick up. Like you, we we want to hear from you. All right, we actually have a we have a meeting we got to get to, so. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.